Hey folks, Twisha Christian here. Today, I want to bring you a prophetic update, uh, a Kim Clement prophecy, where he discusses Apple. And within the same prophecy, he also talks about the BBB, uh, that prophetic well. But first, I'm going to go ahead and just play the video, and then I'm going to talk about it, because I think this is important with what's going on in the news right now with Apple. You know... It's rightfully so, but the other day I was, I was praying, and for those that don't know uh, me, uh, I don't very seldom do I listen to the news. My wife will tell you, my family will tell you, I'm clueless most of the time, and that's because I choose to do that so that if I hear something, it's fresh. I heard something the other day as well, B, 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 and I said, to her, can you make it a little bit clearer? People must invest. That's one of the things they should invest in. Well, I, I feel like he's holding it back because you have to search it out yourself. Imagine if I told you, well, you need to invest in such and such a, a thing, um, market, and it didn't work out for you. You know, you could turn around and, and, and take me to court or whatever. I think that could be one of the reasons. The other reason is probably that God would like you to search it out for yourself and find out. B, B, B. And then there's another thing was where Apple will start losing its influence and another um, phone or system will be will come forth keep your eyes for open there you can see i'm stuttering and stumbling because i don't really know but the lord speaks to him stump what do they call it murmuring lips or not murmuring stuttering, stutt <laughs> stuttering <laughs> lips but i'm saying what's that stammering lips yes. um meaning that you take it you pray about it god wants to give his people millions of dollars and even billions of dollars it's not impossible all right folks so you heard kim clement's prophecies he talked about bbb and then he said that Apple would start losing its influence and another phone or system will come forth. Keep your eyes open there. All right, first, I want to talk a little bit about BBB. And when I first heard this prophecy, I discussed it in several past videos. I broke down some of the companies and came down to BBBXF, which is Brixton Metals. Uh, between me and other people, we did a lot of the research, and it, this was the best fit that I thought that would fit this particular prophecy. And when I first got into it, I think it was about maybe 25 cents, and it's fluctuated all the way up to like 40-something cents. And now you can see how cheap it is now. It's less than 12 cents per share. And you can see its yearly range uh, all the way up to 31 cents. And right now, in the way that we actually look at this, it is close to its bottom. And this might be an opportunity to get in. And this is what Kim Clement was saying. You know, when, when he gives a prophetic word about maybe a particular company or a particular stock or a clue to a stock, and we narrow it down to a stock, and let's say that stock is 50 cents. What if we're 100% absolutely 100% sure that this is the stock, right? Now, just because it's at 50 cents doesn't mean from where we buy it at that it's going to take off. It could actually go down. And this is what we see here with BB. BXF. So BBBXF is actually near its bottom, folks. So I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but now I'm going to have to look at this. Uh, maybe I'm going to have to try to secure some more funds uh, before it actually does go back up. Now, one of the things I do want to share with you folks about the OTC markets, it's a lot more volatile. And one of the things that we are finding out with the whole debacle with AMC and GameStop and the Redditors and the shorting and the fails to deliver, uh, these hedge funds have been manipulating the penny stocks for a very long time. And when they have to cover over in the regular markets like the NASDAQ and all that, and they need money, they come short the OTC markets. So one of the things that I did want to discuss with BBB is when you actually do the search, and there's about five stocks in the OTC markets that have the letters BBB. We have BBBXF, BBBT, BBBK, BBBMF, and BBBY. And a lot of times Kim Clement talked about watching, watching with the eagle eye, keeping your eyes focused. 
when I go back and look, like there's been plenty of opportunities, especially if you've been swing trading BBBXF. But one of the things that people still come to me and they say, hey, what about BBBT or is it BBBY or is it BBBMF? Well, when you actually look at most of the BBBs, you've actually had a lot of opportunity to actually make money. And I'm, I'm going to show you a couple things here because I'm just going to go over each one really quickly before we get into the whole Apple losing their influence. So we looked at BBBXF. Now, say, for instance, we look at... Uh, BBBY, which is Bed Bath and Beyond, and you see the stock price. It's it's 50 if it's 52 week range was $12. Its high was $53. So there was obviously an opportunity for people to make money. So if you were watching all the BBBs, um, Bed Bath and Beyond was actually one of the squeezes that happened, I believe, in January, February, right, where it ran up to $53.90. Right, so people did make money for those who did invest in BBB when it was at its 52-week low, and you did sell in the 50s, then you did make some money. And so potentially that what happened before the squeeze, we saw it drop down to uh, the $18 uh, range, or we saw it drop down to the what 17.94, so basically around the $18 range on January 7th, and then it actually skyrocketed to the $53.90 mark and then it slowly descended so there would have been an opportunity to make money and if you were really watching the Bed Bath & Beyond you go back to the week of May 11th of 2020 you look you can see where and it may have actually gone lower than this but uh, without having to look at each individual week uh, through this website uh, you can see it was down to $5.35 so it was actually pretty cheap to buy if you got in and then you waited and you were, if you actually got in at that point and then sold at the $53 mark you actually made a lot of money so let's go to Blackbird Biotech Inc and we look at BBBT Blackbird Biotech Inc their 52 week range was 0 .0035 so you would actually have gotten it for less than a half a penny it's currently almost at four cents okay it hit it hit its 52 week uh, low at 0 0.0035 and if we would have got invested and you see where it's at now at almost four cents you would have made a lot of money if you would have put a thousand dollars in then there, that would have been the potential to make several thousand dollars from where it is at right now so then we have bbk baker boyer bank corp uh, it's 52 week range only 62 dollars it may have gone down further than that but that would have been a lot out of a lot of people's price range I believe when I was looking at BBB, it was still pretty high. Okay, so looking at the history of BBBK, uh, that stock price still uh, from 2013 would have still would have been out of our price range, and it hasn't really gone anywhere, whether uh, up or down. It's pretty much remained stable. And now we're going to go to BBBMF, and that's Huntsman Explorer. All right, so going back, looking at Huntsman Explorer. Uh, at the time when I first started research, researching Kim Clement, it was around the 25 cent mark. Pretty much, I felt like I narrowed it down to, to Brixton Metals. You have where it actually hit close to its 52 week low. So we do see that it is at its lowest range. Now, is this a stock that's going to go back up? I'm not sure. And I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each one, uh, all the BBBs in a separate video. Um, but I just wanted to show you and kind of just say, you know what, if we actually watch all of these stocks with the eagle eye, right, there's actually, there have been opportunities to make money. Not BBB, when he said that, he didn't give really any other specifics. He didn't say it's a mining company. He didn't say uh, anything has to do with gold or silver or exploration or whatever the case. So I find that interesting that uh, there's actually been opportunities for people to make money off the BBB if we were watching that closely now folks it's like you know I work a full-time job and you know maybe when I first started this channel you know I was hoping that at some point that I would be able to do these videos more often and maybe being able to keep more of an eagle eye on all these things uh, but now at least I am bringing you this information especially those who are into the prophetic stocks the other thing I want to get into 
and is what he said about Apple. So this is a prophetic alert when it comes to Apple because we're going to be looking uh, for some other information, right? He said there's another thing was that Apple would start losing its influence and another phone or system will come forth. Keep your eyes open there. All right, so he's talking about when would start to lose its influence and another phone or system will come forth. Keep your eyes open there. If many of you don't know, there was an, a lawsuit, Epic Games, and most of you already know uh, what Fortnite is. If you have kids that have grown up in the last three or four or five years that have played video games, I'm pretty sure you've heard about Fortnite. You've probably seen your kids do the Fortnite dances and, and all that other stuff. All right, I'm going to explain, basically, this is what Apple does. When you have an Apple phone and you buy something through the Apple Store, so say, for instance, you sign up through Netflix through your iPhone. And let's say that you sign up with the $9.99 package. Apple automatically gets 30% when you sign up through Netflix on your iPhone through, the, through their App Store every month. Not just a one time, but every single month. So Netflix is only receiving a certain is, is receiving 30% less, right? That's a whole lot different than going through your PlayStation or Xbox or any other device where Netflix is basically getting almost a full commission, right? They're not taking a 30% hit every month because you signed up on your, on your PS5. So Epic and also others too as well are calling them a monopoly. Because say, for instance, you come up with something and you have a really cool app. You want to launch it on the Apple and, and Google Play and everything. And say, say it's a monthly subscription for $5.99. When you launch that device, when you launch your product on Apple, Apple is going to take 30% automatically every single month. All right, so that was, that was the issue. So we had a ruling that came down between Epic and Apple and actually both parties won but it's actually not over this is just the beginning and when Kim Clement said when they would start to lose their influence and I believe that this is the beginning of where they're gonna start to lose their influence this article says what the Epic vs Apple lawsuit means for the gaming industry experts consider last week's verdict in the Epic Games versus Apple trial a partial victory for both sides, but the ruling also carries ramifications for companies beyond those involved in the trial. U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers ruled that Friday that Epic failed to prove that Apple's a monopolist and such it owes Apple revenue commissions as back payment. The judge also ruled that Apple cannot keep developers from directing customers to alternative payment methods outside its app store, citing California competition laws. The ruling also has a massive implications for ongoing antitrust suits in the gaming industry, particularly for the mobile gaming world. Gonzalez Rogers' decisions means developers can funnel Apple users to other payment methods, cutting Apple out of some commissions, increasing their own profit margins. We know that Apple makes hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Uh, after this particular ruling, they said that Apple stood to lose about six billion dollars, even though they they actually make hundreds of billions of dollars, and they said it's really a small, insignificant amount. But this is the difference uh, between that revenue and the revenue that they have to make selling other products. And they were getting a thirty percent commission off of, say, Netflix or any other services that you pay for on a monthly basis. Automatically, if you sign up through the Apple Store. Apple was automatically getting a 30% commission every single month, no matter what. Now what that does, it takes away from that. Developers can actually direct them to pay outside of the Apple Store, right? And then still use the app on the Apple phone while making sure Apple doesn't get that 30% revenue every single month. And it actually goes to the, to the developer, right? Now, some people say, well... Six billion dollars out of the hundreds of billions of dollars that they make, it is a big deal because if you if you make a hundred billion dollars, in order to make those billions, you had to spend billions. In this particular case, what it does is 
Apple didn't have to do anything after you signed up for Netflix through their service. There, I mean, there are people that probably signed up through Apple, you know, five years ago with Netflix, right? And Apple has been getting 30% of Netflix for the last five years for doing absolutely nothing. It's just like anything, right? If, if they have a product they put out that costs 50 bucks well, and they made billions of dollars off of it, well, how much did Apple have to put in to actually get to that point, um, to actually make that money, right? So if, if they made a profit of $10 billion off of a particular product, well, did it cost them $5 billion to make or $6 billion to make and put it out and advertise and, and everything else? Do you, do, so you get my point. How much money did it cost them? So that is a very big deal. And this is the other thing, because this lawsuit is not over. And I believe, folks, that this is the beginning of Apple losing its influence. And it says here, Epic Games appeals ruling and lawsuit alleging Apple monopoly. Epic Games filed notice that is appealing a federal judge decision in a lawsuit alleging that Apple has been running an illegally monopoly that stifles competition. The maker of the popular Fortnite game said in a court filing Sunday that it will take the ruling to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco. Now listen to this. The ruling continues to chip away at the so-called walled garden that Apple has built around its crown jewel, the iPhone, and its app store without toppling it completely. The decision also provided Apple with some vindication the judge didn't brand Apple as a monopolist or require it to allow competitor stores to offer apps for iPhones, iPads, and iPods. Those were the two biggest objectives sought by Epic, which filed but it helped be a landmark antitrust case last year after brazenly defying an exclusive payment system that funnels 15 to 30 percent of all in-app digital transactions on iPhones to Apple. So, folks, so basically, especially for those of you who have kids or uh, or you know about Fortnite and what they call the skins, you know, they they're wearing all these different um, you know, outfits to wear in battle, you know, and they got it now where they're doing Star Wars and Marvel characters and whatever else. There are individual, there are actually individual developers, say for instance, I could develop a skin and I could get paid from it through Epic to use on the Fortnite game, but then Apple is going to take their part too as well. So there's a, there's a lot of different things with that that, uh, that has an effect. So since this is the beginning of them losing influence, because guess what, they're not going to be making as much money anymore, they can't force developers basically to give up 30% of their revenue every single month. Who knows what the, the appeal will bring about. So since there's an appeal, it could change everything, right? But I think this is the beginning. So we need to keep watch of what's going on with the Epic versus Apple lawsuit. I think this is going to be huge down the road. And what did Kim say? That when they begin to lose their influence... Another phone or system will come forth. So, you know, what is that phone system, folks? So if you guys have an idea of what it could be, we already have some existing phone services now. But is this a brand new uh, phone system that, that's going to come up or is it one that's already been there? So those are all the things that we got to look at. So if you guys have any comments, uh, put it down below in the description. You know, I like to see a phone service uh, that has a tradable stock that's not that expensive that looks like it's going to take Apple head on and that's what uh, you know that I'll be looking for because uh, maybe this is a, com a completely uh, what, what I'm looking for is a completely different new phone or phone system that's going to be able to take Apple head on so folks so this is uh, my current update for the eight wells we know that Kim Clement had more than eight wells and so uh, trying to narrow down some of those wells has been difficult. We know what some of those uh, financial wells are. So I'm going to do my best to try to keep you updated. If you guys like these videos, you guys want to support, uh, the support links are down below in the description. Also, too, don't forget to go to the House of Destiny and check out their prophecy page and their videos. Without uh, using Kim Clement, we would not be where we are at with many of the eight wells. So... And that our time is coming, folks. So just be patient. We're almost there. So I thank you guys for listening. God bless. And with that being said, TC out.